Yo, what is going on guys? <clears throat> We're in the truck. We're about to head to the range and uh, doing something a little bit different, a little different format, something I wanted to to try out. Um, going to the shop, you know, the range, they, were, they got rental guns, we got rental guns, and uh, I always forget they're there. I always forget that, you know, I could try out these guns that I don't own, perhaps might be interested in buying, and or even if not, just to, to shoot something different. Um, you know, because it's, I can, right? So today we're going to the range. We are going to try, I don't even know, honestly, what guns I'm going to try out. You guys will see later in the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, but I'm going to try out some different guns that I haven't shot before and maybe something that I'm interested in buying, and then we're going to shoot them. And then when it's all said and done with, we'll wrap back up in the vehicle. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys. take your time it can actually group a little bit but it's a very light gun and it's super easy to push around Let's talk about the Ruger LCP-22. Maybe a little bit out of order compared to how you guys are seeing the footage. I don't know exactly how I'm going to roll it in there. 
Um, but 10 shot, little tiny, it's the same size, exact same size as the Ruger LCP2. Basically, if anything, it might be a little more narrow because it's a 22 as opposed to being a 380, but I'm pretty sure it's almost the exact same size, just a 22 barrel in it and magazine and yada yada. Um, size, excellent. Weight, excellent. Um, trigger, not awful, definitely not the best. Uh, it is a 22, and typically we're used to 22s having pretty good triggers on them because most 22s are target style pistols. Uh, this is far from that. It's got the same fixed, non adjustable uh, sights milled into the gun. They're black on black. You could throw some paint on them. I was losing them a little bit. I was wearing the uh, the Edge Tactical Eyewear. Shout out to Edge Tactical Eyewear. You're not going to see them too good in the camera right now. Uh, but they make awesome, awesome eyewear uh, that's ballistically rated. Link in the description box below. I get nothing from it. They do sponsor uh, Team Terribly Tactical as far as the competition shooting team and stuff like that. And we all wear the glasses. And they're awesome. They they really have never had an issue. I've had lead and, and different stuff and casings and different stuff come back and, and hit these and uh, protect my eyes and nothing so uh plus they're anti-fog and all that stuff but either way um check them out but yeah i was losing them because these are dark dark shade you know glasses and the sights are black on black and the range our range at the shop is not the the most well lit oh it's lit dude yeah um but it's not and so excuses excuses um but for its intended purpose it's a get off me gun. It's a gun that, you know, perhaps a woman or, you know, whatever, a small child. Now, let me stop playing. Um, but it's a small gun. People are going to everyday carry it. It's going to be a backup gun. It's going to be a little sock drawer gun. It's going to be a little kit gun, uh, at least the way that I look at it, uh, pocket carry gun, whatever. Uh, a lot of people are probably carrying that gun as a primary gun. And I will say this, that I don't even know what random 22 I was shooting. I got it all just in an ammo can, loose and whatever, and it's all mixed up. And uh, it shot everything, fed everything perfectly fine. It's the rental gun. It does not get cleaned nor lubricated by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it was relatively accurate. I mean, it was accurate when I took my time and, 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 and shot it. Again, not the best trigger, not the best sights, uh, short sight radius. And I was shooting it at like seven yards, seven and a half yards. So, you know, if you can shoot it, you know anywhere close to the way that I was shooting it at that distance, mission accomplished for the design of the gun. Uh, it's an up close and personal. Again, it's the concept of several bee stings. Uh, while 22, not the best for self-defense, I by no means would ever stand in front of one. Uh, the gun is, is excellent in every way, shape, or form. In my opinion, I'll probably end up buying one as a small little kit gun kind of deal. Um, again, it was perfectly reliable. You know, the other things that I don't like about it are, is mainly a training issue or whatever. I could throw some paint on the front sight. I could not wear dark glasses and darkly, darkly lit. They're, it's very darkly in here. Believe me, tremendous uh, in, in poorly lit uh, environments, whatever it is. But the gun shoots. It, I, you could definitely use it to defend yourself. Again, I'm not recommending 22 but wouldn't be a bad option and if you're recoil sensitive noise sensitive whatever you got a million rounds of 22 laying around a little lcp 22 is probably not a half bad idea um would make an excellent kit gun excellent tackle box gun excellent little ankle gun um pocket gun whatever it's 22 it's cheap to shoot which means you can train with it a lot which you should be um and and the only thing the only issue that I have with the gun is that stupid-ass safety. I don't know why there needs to be a safety. Maybe because the mechanism is slightly different than the centerfire variants, the 380 variants. Um, maybe because it's geared more towards newer shooters, uh, which I've seen a lot of new shooters buy those guns. And uh, it, it shoots pretty good for a 22. Obviously, it's really small, really light, so it's going to recoil more than that full-size target pistol that you're shooting on the range for bullseyes or whatever. Um, but again, it's still a 22. It's, you'll see it. The, the gun shoots really flat. You know, it's, it's small grip. I get two fingers on there, but you can still grip the pistol properly. Um, and if you do your part behind the gun, it will put them where you're aiming. Um, at least this one specifically. But what I hate about it is the safety. It's a big flat notch hanging off the side of the gun that goes forward and backwards. Uh, forward, to turn it off, which is natural. It's kind of like the same premise of 
sweeping a 1911 safety down or, you know, a, the same kind of thing on a Smith & Wesson M&P that has the, th the thumb safety. You're kind of pushing it forward. You're pushing it down. It's the same motion with the thumb, basically. Um, but to put it back on, it's almost impossible to put the safety back on in a firing grip. And it's very awkward, cause, at least for me, because the gun is tiny, you know, to rotate it and then get leverage on it and flip the safety back or whatever. It's definitely more important for the safety to come off properly, for sure. After everything's taken care of, you got all the time in the world, you can even use two hands and, and put it back like this and make sure everything's good and put it back in the holster before you put it back on your body. Um, but it gets in the way, it kind of cuts in, not cut, but sticks into your finger, uh, at least me with a high thumbs forward grip on such a tiny gun. And I just think it's pointless or it could have been done better. Maybe that's the only way they could have done it. Maybe that's, you know, the, all they had for as far as room is concerned to have that safety on the gun. But that is the biggest gripe. I would much prefer that they don't have any safety on it other than the trigger safety, which I'm pretty sure it does have that um, and stuff like that. But either way, I like the way that it's shot for what it is. I There's plenty of niches and roles that it will fit in. Uh, again, tackle box gun, little pack gun, little whatever, walking down the trail gun, it's a 22. You could have some snake shot to throw in there to shoot a snake with. I don't know if it'll cycle. Maybe it will because it's such a small, lightweight slide um, or just regular 22s. The magazine is about this tall, so is the gun, and it holds 10 rounds, so 11 rounds total if you keep the thing topped off. Uh, that's uh, the same capacity over bigger full-size target pistols like a Mark IV or a Smith & Wesson Victory or, or anything like that. So I'm impressed. I like it. Again, I've had nothing but good luck with it. That one I did shoot, uh, uh, you know, probably a couple hundred rounds through it at least. Uh, excuse me. Super professional here on the Terribly Tactical channel. But that one I got a pretty good feel for, and it was grouping real good. I don't know if I have... Uh, everything on the footage as far as shooting the, the LCP, but I did shoot it more extensively than some of the other guns because obviously ammo's cheaper and uh, I like shooting it. You know, it wasn't the most comfortable thing in my hand, but it doesn't need to be. Carrying a gun is supposed to be comforting, not comfortable. So it worked, it shot good, and when I did my part, it did its. So I can't complain and they're cheap enough. I'm pretty sure they're less than 300 bucks. Um, or at least I would pay less than 300 bucks. I don't know exactly what they're going for. I know they were like three or more when they first came out kind of thing, but solid gun. Ruger's got, you know, American company and they got great customer service and I've never really had a problem with any of the Rugers. So that's that about the LCP.